But at the last, the siege was so straight that Sauron himself came forth, and he wrestled with Gilgalad and Elendil. Sauron, in facing the greatest of elves and men of the late Second Age, needed to slay at least one of his enemies here, lest he could be overcome. Reaching out his hand to grab the High King of the Noldor and burn him, Gilgalad evaded this and stabbed at the Dark Lord. Sauron swung wildly, hitting Elendil with his weapon and breaking him with the impact. Gilgalad's greatest living friend in men was no more. In fury and power, akin to his forefather Fingolfin, who dueled Morgoth, Gilgalad continued to beat back his foe with such might that Sauron did not notice the son of the king, who took up his father's broken sword, and together Asildor and Gilgalad incapacitated the Dark Lord, toppling him. After Sauron fell, Asildor used Narsil to cut the One Ring from Sauron's hand, as a war guild for his brother and father, or so Asildor said. Even in all his power and wisdom, High King Gilgalad, who yet lived, could not stay Asildor's wrath, nor provide counsel enough to destroy this one ring. Gilgalad, who formerly bore Vilya, was quite aware of the power of the one ring, and wished for nothing more than to see it destroyed, but he knew he could not convince King Asildor of this. And so it was that the War of the Last Alliance was finally over, and the free peoples, who had taken mighty losses, could at last return home, ere the new age of the world began. Gilgalad, who still mourned his fallen friends and kin in the war, was at least glad to see the beginning of an age of peace for the elves, before their time would come to leave Middle-earth. On their return journey home, Gilgalad reflected on the greatness of Asildur, yet feared what he might become if he gave into the shadow that seemed to loom over him. Thus, Gilgalad offered counsel and friendship to the new High King of Arnor and Gondor, just as he'd given such things to Elendil, and Asildor would accept this, having great respect for Gilgalad. Asildor told Gilgalad that once Meneldil, the son of Anarion, was ready to rule in Gondor, he would depart for the seat of his father in Arnor, and the kingdoms of men and elves would live together in Middle-earth in prosperity. And so it was that Gilgalad eagerly awaited his friend's return to the north, hoping to help Asildor and his descendants become great kings of men and avoid the mistakes of their ancestors, as well as any temptation of the Shadow to come. Of all the elves, Gilgalad most knew in his heart that the Shadow of Sauron would one day return, but since the High King of Elves yet survived into the Third Age, he would use this time wisely and prepare, and the Eldar would be ready for the return of their ancient foe. And so, upon returning to his throne in Linden, Gilgalad took up the Ring Vilya once again, as it was the wish of Elrond, his vice-regent, that he take up the Ring of Air again. And so Gilgalad waited for Isildur's return, but in the early years of the Third Age, Isildur was slain by orcs in the Vales of Anduin, in the Gladden Fields. Otar, Isildur's squire, brought the shards of Narsil to Rivendell, and delivered the news of Isildur's fall to Elrond. Gilgalad was devastated when he heard, but... What's more, he worried about the One Ring and what happened to it. And so Gilgalad departed for Imladris in the early years of the Third Age, both to take counsel with the great elven lords and ladies of Eridor, but also to speak with Valandil, the new High King of Arnor. Gilgalad would still wish to have close ties with Arnor, and to see the lineage of Elendil and Isildur come to success. And so the elves would hold counsel, and Gilgalad spoke of his worries, both concerning the return of Sauron and what the loss of his ring might mean. For surely when Anatar, the Lord of Gifts, betrayed the elves in the Second Age and donned a ring of power, this had been that ring. It was too important to leave to the river, or any servants of Sauron who might find it. Gilgalad had been there when Isildur took it, and he knew how fate had been changed that day. So it was with Gilgalad's leadership, scouts from both Rivendell and Lothlorien were dispatched to the Vales, and they would search for many years, until they indeed found the One Ring. I do believe with Gilgalad's wisdom and foresight, as well as his close contact with Isildur's capture of the One Ring, he would not have left it to Chance or the Anduin. Although, I should pause and acknowledge that I am unsure why Elrond, Círdan, and Galadriel did not send forth scouts to at least search the Gladden Fields in the canon timeline, for they would have also recognized the importance of the One Ring when Isildur took it from Sauron, since Elrond and Círdan saw it happen, but for the sake of this theory we will say that Gilgalad, who himself fought Sauron and recognized his power over the rings, would at least attempt a search for the One Ring. 
and so the One Ring would be brought back to Rivendell, where it would quickly be discovered that any elf who bore it was corrupted by its power. But with the One Ring in Imladris, the remaining members of the White Council from the Second Age would come together. Gilgalad, Elrond, Galadriel, Celeborn, Círdan, and Glorfindel. In this meeting, the fate of Sauron and the Ring would be discussed, as well as the problem that any who touched it were corrupted. Knowing it was forged in Mordor far away, the elves would also realize that any attempt on their behalf to destroy the Ring by their own hands would fail. But since Sauron was defeated, the elves agreed to leave the Ring in Rivendell for now, and rebuild the elven kingdom of the north over the centuries, as well as aid Arnor and Gondor in their infancy. Indeed, with the High King of the Noldor still alive, matters of elven state would be far more unified and powerful, for there was still a High King of the Noldor left in the world. Under Gilgalad's leadership, outposts in Aregion would be rebuilt, and Galadriel and Celeborn would rule that municipality until the death of King Amroth of Lorien, after which they would move to Lorien and would rule there. Linden would remain strong under Círdan's leadership when Gilgalad was not directly available. Rivendell would also be strengthened, since it contained the One Ring. It would be reinforced in nearly every direction, with Linden and Arnor to the west, Aregion to the south, and Lothlorien to the east. And so it was that, as the early half of the Third Age went on, the power of the Elves was far greater under Gilgalad than in the original timeline. However, Angmar in the north would still rise, posing a threat to Rivendell and the Ring. But since the Kingdom of the Noldor was strong and was near at hand, Arnor, though it would fracture and infighting would occur, would still stand strong and unified against Angmar in the end with their elven friends. With Gilgalad's aid, I do not believe Arnor would have actually fallen to Angmar, since the kingdoms of men and elves were so close together, and the Witch King would be defeated quicker and more easily than in the canon timeline. However, the problem of the ring still existed, and reports would come to the elves from Gondor, speaking of the attacks from Haradrim, Corsairs, and Easterlings. And the wizard Gandalf, who came to Middle-earth in the year 1000, grew suspicious of the fortress of Dol Guldor, fearing either a Ringwraith or Sauron himself had taken up residence there. The armies of the enemies would still move, and there would still be a threat posed to the elves and their friends in Middle-earth. Thus, Gandalf would be added to the White Council to combat those threats the original White Council that still existed from the Second Age, and the matter of Sauron would be taken very seriously by Gilgalad, as I do not believe he would have ever become complacent enough to think the Dark Lord would never return, especially with the One Ring still in existence. Thus Dol Guldor was investigated by the Council much earlier, and a watch was put on it, making Sauron's return there from the East nigh impossible after the Watchful Peace. Eventually, Saruman would return from the East around 2460, just as he does in the original timeline, and he would join the White Council, becoming privy to the information about the One Ring. Saruman, of course, would begin to lust for the Ring, staring at it whenever he saw it in Rivendell. However, he would know that any attempt to take it for himself at this point would certainly mean death for him, as the White Council was held fast against it by its wise leader, Gilgalad. And so peace would continue to reign in the North, and the elves of Gilgalad would even aid Gondor against the servants of Sauron in the south and east as well, and eventually the Eothade would settle Kelenarthon and create the kingdom of Rohan. With Gilgalad's strong kingdom in Linden, Elrond's seat in Rivendell, the reunited kingdom that had once fractured into the petty kingdoms of Arnor, Galadriel and Celeborn's fiefdom in Lothlorien, Rohan and Gondor in the south, as well as elves, dwarves, and men in North Rovanion working together, the free peoples of Middle-earth were much stronger and more unified than they were in the original timeline. However, Smaug would still invade Erebor in 2770 and would decimate the north, much to the gladness of Sauron who watched from afar, still remaining in the east and not in Dol Guldor. While Gandalf, who had learned about the hobbits in the north, would see to the reclamation of Erebor in 2941, and Bilbo and Thorin's company would go to reclaim the mountain, Sauron, with his palantir from Minas Morgul, taken by the Nazgul, would begin to make an alliance with Saruman, who told him of the One Ring's whereabouts in Rivendell. And so, during the quest of Erebor, when the company was in Rivendell, Gandalf would see just how resilient Bilbo was to the effects of the One Ring, telling Elrond that Bilbo would make an excellent candidate for Ringbearer once Erebor was reclaimed. And indeed, the mountain would be taken back, similarly to how it was in the original timeline, except there would be no riddles in the dark, and Bilbo would have to be far more careful without the invisibility of the One Ring. 
choosing to handle situations differently. But after Erebor was reclaimed, Gandalf and Bilbo would return to Rivendell afterwards, where Gilgalad was waiting for them. The White Council would reconvene, and Gilgalad would see Bilbo's resilience to the One Ring for himself, electing the Hobbit to bring the One Ring to Mordor and destroy it. And so, on the heels of his first adventure, Bilbo would be the ring bearer for the elves, and he would have the White Council to accompany him on this adventure, led by Gilgalad. Saruman, who would communicate this plan with Sauron through the Palantir secretly, would force Sauron's hand, who would arise once more in Mordor in the east. But with the kingdom of the Noldor so strong, and the kingdom of Arnor more powerful even than Gondor was in the south, great hosts of men and elves would begin a march to Mordor, even while the White Council and their ringbearer made their way to Mount Doom as well. Arathorn, the current reigning king of Arnor at this time, would gladly march alongside his friend Gilgalad, and Narsil would be reforged into Andoril by the smiths of Elrond since the time had come for the permanent defeat of Sauron. That which was once Narsil would oppose Sauron next to Iglos, its friend, again. And Arathorn would wield this sword. And so a great host led by Gilgalad, but also this smaller company fated to come to Mount Doom, marched from Eriador to Mordor, picking up allies along the way, just as the host of the Last Alliance did. Sauron, in his much weakened state, and his small armies at this point in the timeline, would simply be no match for the West. After breaking through the Black Gate, the forces of elves and men would continue fighting all the way to the very foundations of Barad-dûr, while the smaller group of the White Council and Bilbo made their way to Samoth Naur in Mount Doom. Saruman, who still desired the ring, knew it was pointless to oppose the entire White Council at any given point in this journey, so he would have to retain his allegiance to the Free Peoples lest he be destroyed instantly. And so coming to Samoth Naur, Bilbo, even in the mighty company of these legends, would not be able to destroy the One Ring, however. He would, in the end, be forced to do so only by the power of Gandalf, which nearly broke his mind. But indeed, through these actions, Sauron would be destroyed, as the elves would have been far more active in the events of the Third Age had High King Gilgalad survived the War of the Last Alliance. In the end, Arathorn would become the High King of Gondor and Arnor, for Gondor had lost its king Aearnor to the Witch King in Minas Morgul nearly a thousand years before, and with Sauron defeated and the world of men in peace, the Fourth Age began early. Gilgalad would lead his people to the Havens, and the elves would depart these shores for Valinor, following their king, for their tasks and time in this world were over. However, one wizard would delay in returning to Valinor, Saruman. With the elves departing the world, Saruman, in the depths of the pits of Isengard, would attempt to build his own ring of power, that he might overcome the world of men in due time, now that the elves were gone. With that, we come to the end of our theory on what if Gilgalad survived. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. I also hope you enjoyed this theory on what if Gilgalad survived fighting Sauron. I definitely had a great time making it. It's been a topic that has fascinated me for a long time. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button and share this with a friend. But what do you all think? If Gilgalad had survived, would the story have happened like this, or would it have gone some other way? Let me know in the comments below. I always love thinking about these kinds of theories. It's also very interesting to think about what would have happened if the elves had played a more active role in the Third Age, as while I was making this video, I realized just how dormant many of them were, but I believe if Gilgalad had survived, they would have been more active and centralized, since the High King of the Noldor, the one who still claimed to lead many of the elves, was still around. I don't know, what do you all think? Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian De La Tour, Chris Ortner, Cal Wetzel, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scouten, Merton, John Hume, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Zabach, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, Reese Jenkins, Adam Petrolik, Kuzan, Brandon Glidden, and Molly Sullivan. Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our patrons, it really means a lot. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the Free Peoples today, and I'll see you all again on Sunday with that video on the history of Minas Tirith. My friends, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one.